Make sure you watch part one of this two-part series if you want to know all about the costs of owning and maintaining a swimming pool. In this final part, I'm going to show you in detail all of the steps you need to follow, including some ways to save money oh, lovely. in order to keep your pool in top shape. But you absolutely must stay on top of pools, especially in summer. Swimming pools are great, but are they worth the time, money and effort? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this comprehensive video about maintenance and associated things based on decades of pool ownership. So let's get into it. Make sure you keep the chlorine topped up every day. Probably a litre. In part one, I explained the differences between salt water and freshwater chlorination. I won't waste your time explaining how to simply pour in liquid chlorine or add stabilised chlorine tablets to a floating dispenser. That's why you'll often see me wearing a, <laughs> a scrap t-shirt around the house because trust me if you get chlorine on your clothes it'll leave you with a lovely brownish white spot permanently. Chlorine in its natural form is unstabilised which means it degrades when exposed to sunlight. So the best time to add these is either late afternoon or early evening so that the sun doesn't prematurely deplete the chlorine and therefore it can work more effectively overnight. Cyanuric acid, or as I call it, sunscreen for pools, is a pool balancing product used to help chlorine last longer. Adding cyanuric acid reduces the sun's impact on chlorine loss. Now, you can buy this in granule form to mix and add to the pool, but we often simply use stabilised chlorine tablets in a floater to add it slowly to the pool. If that doesn't quite bring the levels up for your pool, then you may want to use the powdered form. But just keep regular checks with the test kit. As if you build up too much stabiliser, it can act as a chlorine lock, and then the chlorine itself won't do much in the way of sanitising your pool, despite the chlorine level. So, once every couple of days you'll want to check the chemistry of the pool. Now these are very good. They're all a bit different. Or you can buy big, like chemistry set ones, which are quite handy. But for a quick test, and you'll get some tests will be a bit more than others. You just dip it in the pool at arm's length. A bit cold. For a second, you hold them up. Then you compare them to the to the chart here. If we've got it the right way around. So when you hold this test strip up next to the chart. Like I say, some will have more readouts than others. You see, in this case, if you can read it, the top line is pH. Looks in the OK part. The second line is total alkalinity. Oh, sorry, free chlorine. <laughs> that also looks OK. Total alkalinity is your third line down, that one. And that's within the OK thing. And the bottom one in this case is stabiliser. Which is moderately OK. If the levels indicate the pH is too high, you're going to have to add some hydrochloric acid. Now stick to the calculated amounts here, because if you add too much hydrochloric acid, it does quite significantly lower the pH. If your pH is too low, then you're going to have to add something called buffer. Buffer will raise the pH levels. I'll show you in a minute how to do that. So long as most levels are approximately correct, you don't have to worry too much about it but just keep an eye on it so things don't go out of control, which I'll talk about in a minute as well. So it's a good handy guide. Of course you can just get a sample bottle and take it to your pool shop and uh, they will test it. Now, if any pool shops want to charge you for doing a water sample, don't use that pool shop again, because plenty will do it for free. And as you get to know your local pool shops, shop around and find who's better with prices, because sometimes they are actually cheaper than checking on eBay. Well, if you can hear me, I've waited all day to film this bit because it's very windy today, so hopefully you'll hear me. Um, all right, so when you've taken your pool samples, whether you've taken them to the pool or not, you may find that you need what the, the pool shop will call buffer. And basically that's just a bicarbonate of soda or you might call it bicarb of soda, cooking soda, baking soda, whatever. Now I'm going to show you a way that you can save more money on keeping your pool up to date 
with a simple bit of research now I've known this for many years now buffer is sold in a packet typically and it can be oh, I don't know 20 or 30 times maybe uh, dearer I hope you can hear me over the wind then simply going to your local supermarket any big supermarket will sell it and buying the cheapest box you can of for example this one I've been using this for years this was only say three or four dollars and I'll show you a way the proper way they will recommend uh, is to mix it as a slurry mix meaning you put it into a bucket of water stir it with a stick and trust me I used to do it that way it takes forever it doesn't really dissolve so I'll show you the way I do this remember this is just the way I do it you do it however you want but I'll show you the way I do this I'll turn on the pool pump and I'll slowly drip this or pour this because it's a powder into the skimmer box let me show you how I do it the purpose of buffer is to help wild fluctuations of your pH levels Mind the spiders. Buffer, as they call it, can also be used to increase your pH, or in other words, the alkalinity. Whereas hydrochloric acid will reduce your pH, making it more alkaline. There's a fine line. Oh, mind the spider. So ignoring the spider, that's a stuffy spider. So spider and all throw them in there, a little bit at the time. Oh, spider's coming alive again. Go away, spider. So very slowly over the course of maybe five minutes, just add a little sprinkle at a time into your skimmer box. Don't pour a whole lot in at once because you don't want to end up blocking your filter. So just keep trickling this in slowly. So take your time. And this is a much easier way than stirring it up in a bucket, trust me. And that's how we do that, spiders and all. Oh, and a march fly just bit me, of course. Now, before I continue talking about regular items and maintenance things you need to do, let's address the elephant in the room, and that being your pool going green, which can happen quite easily, actually, and quite quickly if you're not paying attention to things. Perhaps you've gone on holidays and haven't taken precautions. Perhaps it's a seasonal thing, especially summer and rain. Whatever the case, it's whipped up a perfect storm for algae. Algae is the microscopic creatures that cause the pool to be green. So here's what you have to do if unfortunately you've experienced this problem. Phosphate remover, or starver as some pool people call it, actually removes phosphate from the water as the name implies. Now phosphates are what algae feed on. So without phosphates you'll have no algae. Phosphates can be present in your pool through various means such as if there's a lot of leaves or trees around your area. My assistant will now demonstrate how to scoop the pool. They either fall into the water or perhaps there's a strong wind. Whatever the case they produce phosphates. So give that a good shake. And slowly dribble the required amounts that are on the container into your skimmer box. Bit more. 
So the first thing you'll want to do is basically a combination of phosphate remover and a strong algicide. So the first thing you should do is get a stainless steel wire brush. You can put this on your pool scoop handle. It's easier said than done, but you need to try and brush off any algae that's on the bottom of the pool or on the sides. And like most chemicals, especially chlorine, it's best to add chemicals in the afternoon. Now here we have two different types of algicide. This time we're going to use this one because we have some really bad amber spots. So what you need to do is have the pump off. Then you add it to a bucket of water and then you broadcast it right across the pool and let it sit overnight. That's also why in the afternoon it's the best time or early evening to add chlorine because it gets to sit overnight without the sun depleting it during the day. So let's apply this now. Now this won't happen overnight to clear it up but it will take a while, perhaps a week or more and you'll have to run the pump pretty well 24-7 for that time. You'll also have to backwash the pool very regularly during this process which I'll show you how to do shortly. So in a bucket of water we're going to put some of this. Oh, it's blue as you can see. And we'll go around the pool with it and broadcast it all over the top. and let that sit overnight. And now I'm going to talk about something that you'll need to be very familiar with as a pool owner, and that is backwashing. Backwashing should be done at least once a month, but sometimes you'll need to do it far more often if you're going through a process with certain chemicals. Always follow directions on those chemicals, because it'll tell you how often you need to backwash. In some cases it may be every couple of days, for up to a week. Now I'm going to tell you the correct way to backwash. First and foremost, always, always, always turn the pump off between changing the lever position on top of the filter, or else you can damage the seal. So once the pump is off and the pool's not running, and this is the case with most filters, you push down on the handle, and whilst holding the handle down, Pivot the handle around so the notch at the end of the handle fits into the position called backwash. Then, and only then, turn the pump back on. And again, depending on your filter, the sight glass may be in a different position. But in either case, somewhere, there will be a transparent window where you'll be able to then see, once you start the backwashing cycle, all this water will be rushing either through or into the sight glass. Now at first, no matter how clean you think the pool is, it'll be suddenly turning brown or dark coloured. So what you do, you let that run. Now this water is all going to waste. So don't do this for too long, more than necessary, because the water level will drop slowly. So run that until the glass is clear, shows clear water like you could drink. And then again, turn the pump off. So once the pump's off, again push down the handle. This time you're going to pivot around to the word rinse. So once you're in the rinse position, you may turn the pump back on. And a lot of people don't realise this, but you need to then run the rinse cycle for at least 30 seconds to one minute, not just a few seconds. The reason for this, inside of the filter, when you're running the rinse cycle, it starts like a conical pattern. So if you run the rinse cycle for an adequate period of time, 30 seconds to a minute. That lets the sand kind of settle on a more level playing field. 
which will present the water being filtered with a more level medium. In other words, it'll do a better job. So again, after you've let that run for 30 seconds to a minute, once again, turn off the pump. Remember, always turn the pump off between cycles. Then once the pump's off, once again, push down the handle, spin it round to the filter position, making sure again that the notch is firmly in at the end of the pointer. Then you can turn the filter on. And when the filter runs now, that will no longer be being washed down the drain. It will filter the pool in a closed loop. And that's how you do backwashing. So you've put in the hard effort to get your pool clean again and not full of green algae. You've used algicide and phosphate remover. And the water is looking pretty clean, but it's still a little bit hazy. So now what you need to do is get rid of all the floating dead algae. And that's where Clarifier comes in. Okay, so I've chosen the afternoon to do this clarifying operation. This is the particular one I have chosen to use. Of course, there's many brands out there. And the purpose of this, I've just backwashed the pool because all the dead algae has created the cloudy look, which is not a good look. Uh, so that's why we need to do this now. And I showed you how to backwash the pool previously. During the year, most of the time, you can get away with maybe one of these, which is just a tablet form that you simply open, make sure you open it, and drop into the skimmer box. But we're not going to do that today because this is a particularly cloudy pool. So in this instance, uh, we're going to use around about 200 millilitres per pool. Now, this will tell you, pour it into a bucket, disperse it, but we're going to leave the pool running for 8 to 10 hours, in this case overnight. So I'm just going to pour it slowly into the outlet of the pool where the water returns into the pool. I assure you that will mix it very well during 8 to 10 hours. That will get all of the sediment, or the dead algae, clump it, drop it to the bottom of the pool. We'll leave that, well, you don't have to, but I will leave that then tomorrow without the pump running and backwash it in the afternoon. Then you should start to see some real differences. So let's add this now. So following the correct ratio that will be on the instructions on the particular bottle, slowly drip in the required amount of clarifier. And again, this is where it's handy to know the correct procedure for backwashing, because you will have to backwash every couple of days for maybe a week. And that will leave your pool nice and sparkling once that's all taken care of. So two days later, after following those instructions, we're back to having a perfectly clear and well-balanced pool. At least once a year, you're going to also have to do what's called superchlorinate the pool. Normally, typically, this heading towards summer will be the most common season. And what this does is basically wax really hard any debris in the pool that's a contaminant like algae, etc. Basically burns it out. So two ways to do that. You can either dump the entire contents of a container of chlorine in, or if, mo like most people, you have a saltwater chlorinator, there'll be a setting most likely on the dial for superchlorinating. Otherwise, just turn it up to full chlorination level. Now, because of the extremely high level of chlorine, it's probably not wise to swim in the pool for up to a week. I mean, it won't kill you, but it won't do you any favours either. So just be patient and let that do its job. Once again, when it's time, check the levels as I showed you in the beginning of the video. Either go to the pool shop or more conveniently, by far, use one of the test kits that I demonstrated. So there you go. That was my complete guide to pool ownership. I hope it helped you. And if it did, can you help me in return by taking a few seconds, just hit the like button and subscribe, ring the bell so you get all notifications of my future videos. Because this one took me the better part of a year on and off to film, really. So cheers and I'll see you in my next video.